Welcome to another episode of the Future Generations Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Stanton Hom. And this episode with Amy Reichert is, it's a classic. Um, Amy is one of the founders of Reopen San Diego. She, in a valiant effort to unseat Nathan Fletcher uh, last year, was wholly unsuccessful to some degree because she did not win but she was hugely successful because she was one of the greatest threats, one of the greatest truth tellers, and she is just getting started. She has recently been elected to the District 4 Republican Central Committee here in San Diego County. Um, she is uh, rebranded, reopened San Diego to restore San Diego. We had a great conversation about uh, the World Economic Forum, about the San Diego floods uh, in the wake of known cloud seeding in the wake of failed uh, attempts, not even no attempts, zero attempts, an utter failure of the board of supervisors and the, and the, and the mayor of San Diego in clearing the storm drains and talked about how, you know, the, the sharks were in the water, right? People were suffering. People lost their homes. People lost their lives. People lost their livelihoods. And immediately upon surfacing, <laughs> Todd Glory, the mayor, uh, essentially belligerently telling a a a constituent where he was getting his photo op and his video op with his media impress team uh, that he wasn't going to give them any money or any support. That way, he was going to give them dumpsters, and he and he actually made on that promise. Um, wherever you are in the world. In whatever fashion you are listening to this, if you don't know that the World Economic Forum and these crazy uh, tyrants are working directly in your county, we talked about the width and breadth of that agenda, not only in that and not only in San Diego and not only in this state with regard to the floods, with regard to the cloud seeding, with regard to the chemtrails, with regard to the weather manipulation, with regard to the calculated in many respects homeless issue, in many respects with the border, but wherever you are in your world, you have to know that they are working in your local jurisdiction and that you not being active and you not being vocal about that in your own local jurisdiction is not only naive at best, but continuing the ignorance of the common folk and the common citizenry of whatever locale you're in, uh, just like we do here. However, we have warriors humbly stating she's just a mom, right? Warriors in this county who have been stepping up and who have been bringing the truth to the populace en masse and I'm super grateful for her to spend time with me. She's an amazing friend, somebody I deeply respect. And I know you're going to enjoy this episode because in the end, um, I love the fact that she is recently elected and she will be joining, you know, this, I don't know, stepping into the arena, but also into the fray in many respects. She's going to be a wonderful advocate and I can't wait to see how she impacts our county. Love and appreciate you all. Enjoy this episode. Okay, welcome to another episode of the Future Generations Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Stanton Hom, and this episode is with, if you are in San Diego, and if you don't know Amy Reichert, then you are living under a shell, or you are fast asleep, so you're probably not listening to this podcast anyways, but Amy and I have a long history. Uh, we have this incredible respect for each other, and in the end, uh, Amy, you just won an election. I think you are one of the prevailing voices in the county that I believe is not just telling the truth, not just trustworthy, but just 
the the heart of gold and, and and character beyond you know all the things that we could expect for not just leaders and politicians but humans today amy but welcome back to the podcast would love for you to introduce yourself so maybe people who haven't heard of you get to know you again I'm a mom who in 2020 just decided to stand up and say, enough is enough. We're not doing this anymore. This is hurting our kids. It's hurting our society. It's hurting small businesses. It's hurting healthcare professionals, hurting first responders. And I co-founded Reopen San Diego. Mm -hmm. We went on to successfully file a federal lawsuit against vaccine mandates, and we won. I love Oops. It. Can I say vaccine <laughs> on your podcast without getting censored on multiple platforms i think we're already censored on multiple platforms so don't worry yeah. about that <laughs> i think i i love when the email came out that that there was a shift in trajectory that it was restore san diego i think not only is san diego open but san diego is Arguably one of the most awake counties, not only in the state, but in the nation. I think we are a model for many people just in how we've advocated for the people. And I think you've been, uh, just like I said, a prevailing voice in that. So thank you so much for all of that. And thank you for everything that you've contributed. And in the end, like, I just, I'd love to go wherever we go. This is going to be an awesome conversation. Well, I love how we met, right? Because you're a medical professional and you're also a dad. Mm -hmm. And you took a very clear principled stance and you stood up for all of us here locally. And your voice wound up resonating nationwide, in fact, internationally, right? And that's really what it's been all about. And with Reopen San Diego, we were very successful. But now that we've reopened San Diego, it's time to restore San Diego. Yeah. And again, before 2020, I was happy as a clam. I had no idea that this there was this worldwide agenda working against us until COVID happened and the shutdowns and the mandates and the firing and the bullying and the passports. Yeah, I know. It's just all a very sad memory. And now we understand that that was the next step for what they want to do, which is a worldwide agenda. Yeah. So this, that, that was one of the more, um, I, I, we were talking before we recorded, there was a lot of things that I was, that I was very awake to. Like I knew, I knew COVID was what COVID was. I knew that there would be a vaccine. I knew there would likely be some sort of segregation thing. I didn't really know a ton about 24 hour surveillance. I didn't really know that much about uh, like World Economic Forum to the degree that it has been exposed, recognizing that, you know, the the infamous Nathan Fletcher uh, being, you know, one of the young leaders in the World Economic Forum. Those were things that I was like, oh, like this is in my county. Like the, it, it was it was this moment of, of like, oh, oh, like, no way. Really? Oh, wait all of them, like, you know, and it, it just became this thing where you start to recognize that there's a really important dynamic that I think you're sharing that I, I, I love, I love that, that that's where we go first. It's awesome. <laughs> Tell me more. Well, about you and I agenda. both stood up to Nathan Fletcher at rallies and speaking at the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. And anybody that's listening, who is Nathan Fletcher? Okay, let me tell you. Uh, he was the chair of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. He was the chief lockdowner. He was a member of the World Economic Forum doing the World Economic Forum's bidding and mm -hmm. business here locally. Uh, his big thing was uh, we were all conspiracy theorists and disinformation. And I actually took him on in an election and mm -hmm. challenged him. Mm -hmm. He was the most powerful man in San Diego County, married to the most powerful woman, a union boss, the mm -hmm. heir apparent to mm -hmm. Gavin Newsom, doing Gavin Newsom's bidding right here in San Diego. When suddenly, almost a year to the date, wow. Doc, he spectacularly imploded yeah. publicly. Yeah. He admitted that he was struggling with, sadly, this is sad. This is, it's tragic. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. struggling with PTSD and alcohol and oops, 
there were several women accusing yeah. him of not only sexual harassment, but sexual assault. Yeah. So, yeah, he is, he's gone. But the fact of the matter is, and why I keep fighting is the, the World Economic Forum's fingerprints yeah. and dirty paws are yeah. still all over the county. And I want to fight the World Economic Forum on our local turf. It's a hydra, right? Like it's this thing where you cut off a head and then all of a sudden another one pops up and it's, it may not be somebody as, you know, that has as much longevity as, as Nathan Fletcher. I mean, you could, you could literally have a conversation with him and because of the way that he communicates, you're like, wait, he's actually very charismatic. And you just know that the darkness behind the darkness behind the darkness are pulling all the puppet strings behind him. And they're regularly training the next generation. You know, you're sharing incredible posts about Tara Reamer. You're sharing incredible information about the county supervisors because of all the things that they've radically failed at in the county. And, and it makes you wonder, right? It makes you wonder, like, are they just, you know, very uh, strategically and orchestrated, like, like Gavin Newsom has destroying the state? Are they, are they doing that with the county? You know, it's crazy, right? It's crazy to witness. Yeah, you referenced my social media. My social media has just blown up. I, I recently it. put out a video and it had over two and a half million views, <laughs> and almost 200,000 likes and 50,000 shares. And I'm really just shining a light and exposing the San Diego County Board of Supervisors mm -hmm. and really what's going on. Sadly, what happened on January 22nd was we had historic floods Mm -hmm. here in san diego as well as throughout southern california it made nationwide news here's the thing though the reason why so many homes were destroyed was because the city of san diego had not been taking care of the storm drains they were so bu busy trying to figure out all these surveillance cameras that they're going to put around the city and 15 minute cities and bike lanes, they forgot to take care of the storm drains and they became overwhelmed and over a thousand homes have been destroyed yeah. in San Diego and it is the city's fault. One of the things that I uncovered, and I love it when people send me messages, mm -hmm. by the way, on Instagram, please go to my Instagram at, at Amy, F-O-R, San Diego. Someone sent me a link and it was about cloud seeding. Yeah. And I'm like, this is very interesting. And so then I just did some research on my own and I found on an actual government website that cloud seeding took place in Southern California, January 20th, 21st, and the 22nd. And of course, the January 22nd is the date that we had the historic flooding. So let me just tell you, it's like you to be name called the conspiracy theorist. And by the way, when I challenged Nathan Fletcher, he tried to use my friendship with you against <laughs> me. Wait, with me? This is In awesome. I love this. Yes. I'm very, I'm very proud of this. Go ahead. Tell me more about yes. this. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's what we're up against. We're wow. up against people who really will stop at nothing to strip us of every single right that we have. And I know that your audience is listening. I'm saying this and they know this to be true. A lot of other people are just not aware. And so when they hear me say these kind of things, it's yeah. shocking. But it, I, the fact of the matter is what I have seen and experienced in the past few years, there's only one way that the government seems to be going and it's incrementally marching towards taking more and more of our privacy away our medical freedom and our rights so you i i, I appreciate you sharing what you shared about like the 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 cloud seeding leading up to the storm and then recognizing like oh they failed to clear the storm james or or did they right? Or did they? And, and, and yes, they were not cleared, but did they fail? And that's something that I've been thinking about for a long time, because I remember being at a art studio, can't remember the name, art studio in National City. It was very early down, early on. 
in the lockdowns and everything, Melissa um, uh, hosted this event. I remember meeting Michael Seifert there. I remember uh, the the Chittix were there. I remember Mike Johnson was there. And Mike Johnson uh, just came by my office. He's in Escondido and he's like starting a new uh, farmer's market that we're going to support up here because that's where we live and that's where our practice is now. And he talked about, I don't know if you were there. I don't know if you remember this, but there was a bill, um, AB 262, that basically put into uh, law the fact that the police powers for the public health branch, right? The public health department for California. And he was like, does anybody know? Like, because there was a hep A outbreak in the homeless downtown, right? Mm -hmm. And and he was like, does anybody know where that came from? And he's like, well, it came from the hep A outbreak. He's like, but yeah, but do you know where that came from? And it was a bill previously outlawing plastic bags. That's in right. In San Diego, outlawing plastic bags, which took away the devices that the homeless collected their poop in. And then all of a sudden there's a hepe outbreak that installs the next law that installs the police powers that allowed COVID to happen at all in the state. And that was also, I think that was also uh, authored by, I believe, Todd Gloria and Lorena Gonzalez. I believe it was authored by them too. And so it's crazy to think about these webs of deception masqueraded as virtue. And in the end, it's it's it takes someone like you, right? Because I go into my office and the intake forms used to be like, hey, um, is your, are you or your child vaccinated? Um, did you know you had a choice? Did you have any reactions? Do you want more information? And before, if somebody checked no on more information, I would just leave it. I wouldn't really like talk about it. And back then it would be like still maybe like 60, 40 people would want more information. 60, maybe more. And if they did, then we would enter the entire conversation about informed consent. And we've been doing mm. that for over a decade. I've been teaching workshops in the county for over a decade on particularly childhood chats. Just taught one last month and it was, it was completely packed and people are still having this conversation. Now our intake forms say the same thing, but everybody says virtually no. And everybody virtually says Either, yes, I want more information, which is like almost every, but the people that say no, don't not want it. It's because they already know. Mm -hmm. It's because they're educated. And it's an interesting dynamic because now when I walk into every room in my practice and I can walk in and I'll say, how do you like that fake rain? And everyone will be like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what end of the spectrum they're on. They're like, this shit's fake. Like we know all of this is fake. We know that we're oh, <laughs> exactly right. Like raining like, right now. And it's, and we know like, because we, we come outside two days ago yesterday and we're like, Oh, interesting. What's that up in the sky? You learn from Alex X podcast with a uh, rent at Senum, And she says, whether you see that they're spraying or not, they're spraying, right? Whether you see and visibly notice that it's already happening. And it's a program that's been essentially installed for like over five decades, which is wild to consider, you know? And so thank you for sharing that because I believe that people, people know, and then people are starting to see the outcomes. And that video, that 2 million view video is, is one of my favorite ones, you know, one of my favorite ones, because I believe that you were able to do, take the model of what we had been doing for the three years of COVID and just take it and use it to the, tell the truth in the post COVID world, because it's not like COVID being gone and things open ended the war. It's that it's just behind the curtains much further than it used to be. And you're showing that it is absolutely not. So thank you for sharing that video. And thank you for, thank you for talking about this. It's really important. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I shared this with you on a previous podcast, being a truth teller, has actually been amazing for my mental health. Because in 2020, mm -hmm. I knew I'd had enough, but I felt powerless. And once I felt powerless, I realized I was starting to feel depressed. And so being able to recognize that in myself, I realized that I had to take action. Yeah. Because if I didn't take action, it would be more painful to remain silent. 
and live this life of quiet desperation. So now I literally wake up, I'm an early riser, 5.30 every morning. I take a three mile walk with my husband too in the morning, but I literally wake up just raring to go. Like I have the tiger, heart of a thousand lions. I'm like, what it. am I gonna expose today? So I actually had a, a news reporter call me about something that's very controversial going on in San Diego County. It'll be coming out very, very soon. He was asking my opinion and what did I know and scheduling an interview for next week. And he said, so Amy, are you running for office? I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, so you're like a watchdog. And I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm a watchdog, but the pit bull version. Mm. So I, I it's incredibly freeing to go, I don't care what they say about me. I've been called every single name in the book and they're not going to stop me. Tell me a little bit more about just because we saw it. Um, we have never talked about it in this podcast. And I know we are going to get a little more local um, with, like you shared, like we, we, we have a national wide brand. We have a internationally wide brand, but we are, I mean, I'm a dad and a doc and I'm, I'm, this is my hometown and this is my kid's hometown. It's our home County. And I have felt like there has not been as much cohesiveness as much as we did maybe during COVID, but I'd love to know about that flood. I'd love to know about the fallout from that flood. I'd love to know some of the stories that you were able to hear that many of us didn't hear because many people actually didn't cover the stories of what was actually happening, covering a lot of what was potentially the problematic aspects of our leaders, right? Could you tell us a little bit about that? There are great people that are doing great work right now down in the flood zone, and I merely answered their call for help. So there was one house in particular that was right next to a canal, and it was shocking the stories that I heard. So these are homes that have been uh, in the city of San Diego since the 1920s. Yeah. And the people in these neighborhoods, they're working class. Uh, some of them are barely getting by. On my way down to the flood zone, in fact, I was pretty shocked. Uh, one of the things I saw at eight o'clock in the morning was there was a young woman standing in the middle of the street wearing uh, lingerie, fit, fishnet stockings, a jacket, and high heels. She was soliciting for prostitution. And it was shocking. And as I kept driving, there was another woman. And then I dug into that and I'll go back into the what happened, the flood. But it's really kind of, it just tells you, yes, the flood happened, but a flood has already been happening to these neighborhoods. These neighborhoods that these elected career politicians wow. say they care about the most, these are the neighborhoods that have open prostitution, open pimping. I, I get calls from people, Amy, there's a 14 year old who's uh, selling herself on a street corner and they're flooded with fentanyl. They're allowing people to openly shoot up fentanyl and smoke crystal meth. These are already going on in these neighborhoods that these elected career politicians say they care about the most. So I headed down there merely to put on some work gloves and help to gut out a home. And wow. as I'm here in my home, you know, just imagine that the water going up higher than this little tree here in your home and it happening so quickly, just within a few hours wow. and nobody being able to come out and help you. Stories of people who had elderly parents mm -hmm. who had to put them and on top of a mattress so that they could uh, float them in the water. Insane. It's just insane. And then the one of the biggest insults was, and by the way, everything's destroyed. Of course. Uh, and everything that you, I could see family photo albums destroyed. The insult was the mayor of San Diego, Todd Gloria, who by the way, voted for the vaccine mandate and to fire yes, all did. first responders who didn't get the COVID shot. He goes down there for his photo ops 
And this is a story that was told to me by a resident. So he knocks on this resident's door and he's just saying, well, if there's anything that I can do for you, you know, just say it. And like the man, he looked him right in the eye, the mayor, and he said, well, for starters, you can take your hands out of your pockets and give me some money. Wow. So what happened was we know the city caused this flooding and the destruction of these homes. You would think that there would be relief immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead, the, the mayor looked this man in the eye and said, we'll have dumpsters for you. Wow. Dumpsters. Wow. That's the relief the wow. city of San Diego provided dumpsters. Wow. So many people have asked me what I do to stay mentally and physically resilient in the midst of the unending polarization, fear, and tyranny. Literally nothing has made a bigger impact for me than daily cold plunging. Three minutes, 37 degrees every morning for over a year now. My friends, I wanted to tell you about the Edge Tub from Edge Theory Labs. Their portable and inflatable tub can alternate between an ice bath and hot tub. I've been regenerating the benefits of cold plunging every day. Like better sleep, better focus, and more energy. We have had some really amazing interviews to learn more about cold exposure. But in the meantime, I invite you to check out Edge 3 Lab's website to learn more. I'm also happy to share an exclusive offer for Future Generations podcast listeners, $150 off using the code THEFUTUREGEN. You can find more info in the show notes. Get cold. You're talking about the floods before the floods, right? And we're talking about the, the, the controversy and the tsunami wave of problems before COVID. And I, I remember I, I've been in Sacramento for over – actually – I started going to Sacramento as, as a chiropractic student like 15 years ago, lobbying for <laughs> chiropractic patient rights and lobbying for scope yeah. of practice and stuff like that. And it was one of those things where I was like, does this work? But it was cool, right? Because you go to the Capitol and you meet, you know, these people and you, you get some time with them. There are some back then, Joel Anderson was very amenable to, to chiropractic, very amenable to a lot of um, our potential uh, needs and things like that. Um, and then I remember meeting Todd Gloria, and this is going to be a short story because it's not even worth our time. But I remember meeting him and I just said something like, um, I was a chiropractor and a veteran or something like that. And it was just like, hmm. It was like zero response, zero, zero person ability. It was just like, hmm. like it wasn't even like, like worth my time or his time to like even have any sort of conversation. And I was like, I don't think I'm ever going to forget this name. And then here he is mayor, right? He's the mayor of our city and he is doing exactly the same thing to people who have lost everything. And people who have lost everything, not only under his watch, but potentially under his orchestration. And that's insane to me. It's insane to me. And it's it's wonderful. It's tragic, but it's wonderful that you've been taking such a lead in exposing a lot of this because I feel it has only just really just supercharged a lot of us to pay a lot more close attention as well. So thank you. Well, and you're spot on with your interaction with Mayor Todd Gloria. Just a couple of days ago, he was interviewed in our local paper because he wants to have a sales tax increase by a full percentage point, which mm -hmm. will then funnel $400 million every year into the that. city of San Diego's treasury, right? So when they're interviewing him, he's saying, well, we have the studies, we have the data's data to support that we need new roads and storm drains. And I'm like, data? I'm like, why don't you just listen to the people? Yeah, The people are telling you yeah. we have crumbling roads. The people yeah. are telling you that their homes have been flooded and destroyed because you didn't manage the storm drain system. So I, I agree with you, he's out of touch and your interaction with him speaks volumes. And it's, it's like back then I was, I was a lowly new doc, you know, I wasn't anybody special. I wasn't any, I was in the County. I was an, I was, a, I was a constituent, but these are like, like to have that. Yeah. Maybe you're busy, but to have some, to actually go to someone's home 
who has lost everything, who's pleading and just the, 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 the belligerence of, we'll send you dumpsters. Mm-hmm. was good on his word i guess <laughs> that that's what they did for us you know like that's crazy man that's crazy so, yeah, cloud it, it, it seat, so ahead, we filled we filled up those dumpsters by the way with yeah. people's livelihoods and everything that they owned just destroyed wow. horrible so so tell me more tell me more about what is on your um what are your priorities what are the things that you feel called to um now that you've you're it's it's the Republican committee for district four. Is that correct? Can you tell me yes. more about your position? Tell me more about what you have as um, priorities in this position. So we just had an election on March 5th and I was the top vote getter. Beautiful. And so the central committee and each party has one. So the Republican party has one, the democratic party has one. And essentially a central committee member is a board of director for the party. And more than ever, we really need new energy and new ideas and new focus. And I really want to just get away with like this focus on national politics right. and just be laser focused on local issues. I can tell you that in the past three months, it's it's been the floods that I've worked on. I've also been challenging some of the special interests here. There was a political action committee that dumped in a quarter of a million dollars into reelecting Todd Gloria, and they sent deceptive mailers that violated federal election law. So I filed a federal election complaint with, along with Restore San Diego against this PAC under oath and under penalty of perjury. And hopefully this special interest group will be exposed. And I want to share with you just real briefly what I've learned in the past couple of years. I have a degree in political science from San Diego State University, but they never taught me Mm -hmm. what I have learned and what I have seen in the past couple of years. And really what I've seen is we have career politicians who are completely captured by special interests. Mm -hmm. It is literally, they just buy people now. Yeah, It is that blatant. In an election that I ran in last year, my opponent, spent $1.1 million against me. And it was mostly funded by labor. Labor has a huge say in everything. And here's the thing, like, I am all for workers' rights. I filed a federal lawsuit to defend workers' rights. But what's happening is it, the, the scale is completely tipped this way with unions and they are corrupt, they are greedy, and they are out and out buying politicians. So once these people get in office, they just do the bidding of the people who paid for them to get there. So we need to course correct and we need to expose them. Otherwise, again, we're just gonna keep slowly, incrementally moving in a way that will be unrecognizable to everybody in just five years. What's insane is that, you know, you, you win an election and instead of having some sort of collaborative, cohesive, collegial, um, work with your colleagues to, to actually just serve the public, right. To serve humanity, you have as one of the first priorities to expose these people who are literally doing the opposite, right? They get into their seats because they're essentially funded to do so. And then when they're there, all they do is put into put into uh, the world the things that the people who paid for them to get there, right? And none of it has anything to do with actually the betterment of us, right? The betterment of society, the betterment of the way that, like the actual grassroots way that our priorities would, would actually lead to, right? And it's crazy because... I mean, grateful for you, right? Grateful for those like you, because I think in each district, there's a little bit of activity that I can see that's happening. And it's crazy. It's crazy that that seems to be a theme that, you know what, we're actually doing this because there's a bunch of 
corrupt people that are actually undoing all these things that are really, really, really important about. Can you, can you tell me one thing because about the floods? Did people really come in, these big corporations come in and start offering money? Just like Hawaii, you know, like Hawaii, f- quote, air quote, fires, destruction, ancient ancestral properties. And all of a sudden the government's going to take over. All of a sudden these big corporations essentially are going to like install on these, you know, these people of multi-generational ownership is that what happened in San Diego as well? 100%. Crazy. Within days after the floods, uh, there were people walking around in polo shirts. I thought I uh, saw that. Yep. Emblazoned with local uh, house flipping companies and corporations and developers. And they were coming in and lowballing the people who just lost everything. And by the way, not only have they lost everything, these people are coming in, insulting them and lowballing them in their time of desperation and need, because guess what? The government isn't even providing anything but a dumpster to them. Yeah. Yeah. So, and these people are just like me and just like you, you have Mm -hmm. a, a practice that you support. I have a job that I have to do every single day. If I had my home flooded. If you had your home flooded, you wouldn't be able to concentrate on your practice. I wouldn't be able to concentrate on my work. So yeah, it was really despicable. But what was very interesting about that too, again, and I spent some time down in the flood zone. I also saw, you know, who else was circling those neighborhoods? Attorneys. Crazy. So attorneys were right in there saying, you know, we're going to sue. Yeah. Right. So. I, I I support attorneys. There's nothing wrong with attorneys, but it was just very interesting about who was there mm-hmm. on the ground, mm-hmm. knocking on doors. Mm-hmm. It was the developers and attorneys, and who really should have been there was the city who caused it, and all they were providing was dumpsters. And I do want to say something that I have noticed. So there is a move to densify California. They've changed laws at the state level. And by the way, thank you for going to Sacramento and calling them out. It does work. They're trying to change and rezone single family home neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And they keep saying there's a housing shortage. There's a housing shortage, except for the third year in a row, San Diego County has declined in population and the state lost population for the first time in its 150 year history. So wait a second, we have a housing shortage, yet our population is declining. What is really going on? Of course, we've had record inflation and so housing keeps going up. But here's why I wanted to mention this, because this is where the World Economic Forum steps in, where the with their saying, you'll own nothing and be happy. So what happens is with the rezoning of a single family home neighborhood, a corporation comes in, buys the house next door, bulldozes it, puts 10 units with no parking, right? And the city is saying, great, no parking. Now we'll force people to take public transit, Mm -hmm. right? And then What's going to happen is it is stripping the middle class and the working class of owning property. And soon corporations will own most of California. And good luck, everybody. If you don't wake up and start fighting this right now, you know, if you want to buy a house, you're a first time home buyer and you're ready to buy a home, maybe in a couple of years, you're going to be bidding against a corporation. And that corporation is going to outbid you because they have the money and they know when they buy that house and they bulldoze it, they're going to turn it into a multi-million dollar apartment complex. Mm -hmm. They're not going to sell those units. They're going to rent them and they're going to turn the next generation. That's what they want to do to all of us. Turn us into forever renters with no parking and force us onto public transportation. I don't know if you know this, Amy, but the reason why we moved our office, right? We moved, we moved, we were moving up to Escondido. We signed escrow papers. And like the day before we signed, 
we got notice from our landlords and our landlords were essentially, so we used to have, when we first entered our office eight years ago, which was right in Banker Hill, right at 4th and Upas, right in your district. And we love, we love the district. We love serving our community. Um, and we had this amazing old, she's, she's in her sixties, kind of like a little, like a wizard type. She had inherited the building. She owned that corner. She owned um, 5th and Upas. And she owned uh, the building that used to be Best Start Birth Center, which is right next to my office, which was right on like just just south on Upas. And she couldn't take care of it anymore. And so these mm. these corporations came in, said, you know, offered her a good deal and they had plans. They were already posturing to move us out and then COVID. Right. And so they put all their plans on a pause. We were able to stay in our office for, you know, for the rest of the time of COVID. And then as soon as COVID ended, I started to call them just like, Hey, tell me what you're going to do. Like, tell me when you're going to kick us out. Tell me what, you know, what your plans are and no word. We're going to tell you no big deal. And then one day we had some real estate, commercial real estate comes guys come in and it's like, Hey, I heard you moving. We're like, wait, what? So it's like this crazy like thing because the whole reason why we moved is because these big developers had already bought our office and bought our property. And it was just a matter of time for them to be like, Hey, you're done going, you know, you get, you got to figure out where you're going to go. And if you look at that entire neighborhood in Bankers Hill and Hillcrest, all the old mom and pop shops are virtually gone because they've basically been ousted, you know, and, and what does get installed is essentially what you're saying. You're, and what's crazy to me is I'm interested in what's going to happen to a lot of those historical buildings. You know, are those going to be preserved or are those also, you know, potentially vulnerable as well? So. This is the grotesque, despicable campaign that is being launched by developers and their consultants and their lobbyists as I speak. So when it comes to those neighborhoods that have historical buildings, and I've seen this with my own eyes, what they do is they label those people as NIMBYs, but then they go a step further and they use language and insults that are reminiscent that they used against you and against me during COVID. They're calling people who want to, who don't want a 10 unit apartment complex next to their single family home. They're calling them racist. Whoa. It, they are targeting the, the neighborhood Talmadge in particular, they're saying that it's got a history of white supremacy. Yes. Wow. So that is the that is the other wow. rhetoric, despicable rhetoric that they're using for their World Economic Forum agenda. You'll own nothing and be happy if you complain about your the house next door being turned into a 10 unit apartment complex. It's because you are racist and you do not want people of color in your neighborhood. Wow. Excuse me. Tearing down wow. the house next door and putting up a 10 unit apartment complex that, by the way, will go for market rate. This is not affordable housing. It's going to be brand spanking new apartments taxed at the highest level. They won't be able to have units that are below market. People will be paying top dollar. So they are they are horrible, horrible liars. And what's really interesting is I've done the deep dive research into the people that are behind this really dark rhetoric. And these people live in very wealthy neighborhoods in San Diego County that wow. would never tolerate the kind wow. of development that they are trying to shove down the throats of everybody else while calling them names. It's terrible. So the people who say that again, the people who are kind of behind calling these people out. So, so there, so, so you rewind for me, the historical building people are, are upset, right? Because there's intrusion from these big corporations. They're saying, you know, they're complaining about it. There's, there's feedback from who that says that they're white supremacists. So like just complaining about it. Corporate mm -hmm. intrusion is, is there's, white there's, there's one there's one group on Twitter that in particular not only started going after Talmadge, but started calling out some of the local leaders in Talmadge. 
mm-hmm. and saying that they're preserving white supremacy and uh, they're keeping people of color out of their neighborhood. So I decided to do a little research. I am a licensed private investigator. I've had my license since 1999. I'm an active and good standing in the state of California. Mm-hmm. Started doing a little research on this group that was name calling the good people of Talmadge, right? And it turns out that the founder of the group lives in one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in San Diego. And they had all these corporate sponsors. So what I decided to do is every time, and it was, I believe the group is LSSC. Forgive me for not remembering the name right off the top of my back, off the top of my head. I started, I said, every single time you, you wrongly call somebody a racist who wants to preserve their neighborhood, I am going to tag one of the corporations that's one of your sponsors. Wow. And so every time they would do that, I would retweet them and I would tag Wells Fargo. I would tag Bank of America and I would say, do you support this racism? Wow. I think it's insane. So yeah, they're using they're safe they're using the same playbook that they use against you, against me. Mm-hmm. If you if you were just hesitant, you're like, you know what, I'm just not sure if I want to take the COVID shot. You were you were called a granny killer, a conspiracy theorist, all kinds of names. And they're just they're doing the same playbook all over again. And it just it doesn't work for me anymore. Virtually every leader in the health freedom movement talks about the insecurity of the food supply as one of the primary avenues of tyranny. Our family has rigorously sourced our foods for over a decade, and one of our favorite sources is Farm Match. And specifically, if you are in San Diego, Real Food Club PMA. My kids are literally made from their maple breakfast sausage and the amazing carnitas we make from their pasture-raised pork. But from regeneratively raised raw dairy products to the organic potato chips made in regenerative lard or anything you might get at your local farmer's market, our family's overall wellness and the security of our food lies in the hands of Farm Match and Real Food Club. I am so excited to be sharing about Farm Match and Real Food Club to offer future generations podcast listeners 10% off your first order. You can find the code and link in the show notes. Enjoy the rest of the show. Love and appreciate you all. I'm sure many of you are already aware of the importance of blue light blocking glasses, but many of you may not know about my favorite protective eyewear company, Raw Optics. They offer lenses for both daytime and evening use and have been developed with the world's leading experts in light and optics. Their mission is to help people realize their dreams by transforming their sleep. For those of you who've been paying close attention to my family's journey, you know that optimal eye and brain function is critically important to us and pivotal to my son Luca's radical healing journey. That is why in addition to the potential these glasses have to optimize your sleep, I'm so excited to be partnering with Raw Optics to offer future generations listeners 10% off any purchase. You can find the code and link in the show notes. Love and appreciate you all. Tell me a little bit about what you believe the strategy is. It, it's, it's, it's one thing to, to tell the truth. I love, I love what you're doing as far as like your social media, your ability to kind of scale a lot of the truth telling that you're doing. What would you say, you know, local leaders, grassroots leaders like myself that could be, you know, potentially influential with you, what would you suggest many of us do? And if you're listening and you're not in San Diego, just know that this is happening in your neighborhood, whether you know it or not, it's happening in your neighborhood, whether you know it or not, it's happening, not just at your state level and at the national level, which we know is you know, totally corrupt, but it's happening all the way down into your, your city and your county level. What would, what would you suggest that we do? Well, I love what you've been doing already. I mean, you stood up and you went to Sacramento. Not everybody can go to Sacramento, but you can go to your local school board meeting. You can go to your local super board of supervisors meeting or your city council meetings. 
You can speak mm-hmm. during public comment. You can use your social media. That's how I got started. Mm-hmm. I, That's awesome. Again, I just really think of myself as just a mom. I know some people yeah. say you're not just a mom. Moms are always more than just a mom. But you know what I'm trying to say. I do know exactly I what you're trying to say. Literally just decided, hey, I'm going to speak out on social media. I know people aren't going to agree with me, but I'm going to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Right? Once mm-hmm. you can get past that, you will be shocked how much you can achieve. And you know, as we were talking, I just was kind of thinking, I really think, you know, RFK Jr. Mm-hmm. is really on to something with this housing thing that I've been talking about. One of the things that RFK Jr. talks about is about how BlackRock State Street and Vanguard, they own 95% of the top 500 companies in the S&P. And what these companies are slowly doing is they are buying single family homes. So this is not just happening in California. This is happening nationwide. And what RFK Jr. was saying was that by 2030, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard will own 60% of the single-family homes in America. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's the corporate takeover. It's the stripping of the middle class. It is the relegating of people to being forever renter. So, you know, I mentioned RFK Jr. So back to the local level, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're in San Diego, reach out to RestoreSanDiego.org. Join our email list. We have calls to action all the time, ways to get involved. We're going to be having a news conference on Tuesday. Beautiful. We're going to be supporting a veteran owned and minority owned businesses that City Hall is trying to destroy. Wow. Find a like-minded group in your area and get plugged in. That's awesome. It'll be one of the most rewarding things you've ever done in your life. I know that's true for me. It's um, it's it's a beautiful thing because it you start to see all these things pop up during COVID. The I can't remember the phrase, but you'll own nothing, but you'll be happy, <laughs> and it's like. Actually, it's just happening, right? Actually, it's just it's just happening everywhere, and it, and 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 we know that um, who knows what corporate entity took over my office building, right? Who 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 knows, right? But but we know that when you get up to BlackRock State Street, that they're just webs of the Hydra, they're webs of the World Economic Forum, and their tentacles and how they essentially are leveraging all of this stuff. And it's 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 crazy because to think that sixty because because that's the thing, right? I was telling my team uh, yesterday in a quarterly team meeting, you know, um, you become a parent. And yeah, it's like, I'm just a dad and it's a humble thing, right? It's a humble thing because it's just the most grassroots that you get is just loving your kid, right? And caring about the world they live in. We're called future generations. And that, you know, little silhouette is my daughter, right? That's her face when she was a baby. And that's just how and why I do what I do, right? But you do that, or sorry, you get married, you do, you have a kid and then you own a home, right? It's this natural progression of life, right? That arguably people can't do in in California, can't do in San Diego anymore. And largely what you're saying is that that's the agenda. The agenda is that these companies are going to come through and whether or not they drive, which they are, they're driving the price of housing up and making, they're pricing everybody out of the state and of the County. But what they're actually doing more pervasively and insidiously is they're taking away the inventory or even the opportunity And they're forcing the hand of renters, right? They're forcing the hand to actually be, you know, and set in in contract with them essentially forever. Right. And it's a, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy to think about. Yeah. And it's really just about more and more control. Mm. I mean, imagine being in a position where you're a renter you know, you shared your story of what it was like to lease as a businessman. 
Yeah. Right. Not knowing if you were going to be able to stay that it's, it's not just that your rent won't be stable. You never know when it's going to go up. You never know when the landlord is going to sell yeah. the business, the, the, uh, the structure mm. and you'll be out on the street. And so, yeah, just taking away that opportunity from people and corporatizing, put, putting, Man. putting, putting, What's private property into the hands of corporatists? Mm -hmm. It just. But then you go further, right? Then you go further. And if you are a homeowner, then what they can do is they can cloud seed for a strategic amount of time. Actually, if they want your land, they can just fail, right? Quote, fail at clearing out the storm chains that would protect that region of San Diego or wherever it is that you live. And then all of a sudden you're homeless again, you're homeless and you're, you're having these other entities come in to save you. And meanwhile, Todd Glory has got a dumpster for you, right? I think, I think you're, you're, you're bringing in this new breed of, of, of politician, of leader, of, of grassroots, you know, perspectives that, that largely before seemed so, um, I don't know what the right word is. It's like, okay, saving the animals here or, you know, saving the rainforest here, feeding the hungry here. But at the, at the end of the day, it's happening here. It's happening in our homes. It's happening in our counties. It's happening in our neighborhoods. It's happening with our, our brothers and sisters that are literally just trying to live as citizens of this amazing country. And in the end, it's like, there's all these dark webs that are that are that are infringing upon that in ways that are far more nefarious than we could ever imagine. I think this is really important. I think it's important more so um, not just the fact that we're having this conversation, but the fact that this conversation is essentially um, a blueprint for the one that virtually everybody should be having in every neighborhood to activate so that, you know, your account is one account that's literally exploded because you've been telling the truth for years, but because you've been telling the truth in times when people have largely slowed in that truth telling. And now I think what you're inviting us to do in whatever part of the world you are is that the level of truth telling that exists today is, um, is exactly the same as it was during COVID is exactly the same as it was before COVID, mm -hmm. but the impact now and um, the ability to um, make a dent in that world, you know, economic forum agenda is always going to come down to us at the, at the, at the base level, which is awesome. I really appreciate that. Thank you. What, what, as we close Amy, I would love you to just maybe give us one big thing that you would invite this audience to do if we can move the needle. I've been there myself. There were things that I believed in my heart and I knew in my mind to be true, but I was afraid to speak up. And once I crossed that line where I started to say the things that other people believed in their heart and knew in their minds, it was amazing. Well, first of all, I lost a lot of friends, right? So-called yeah. friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, oh my gosh, I got an amazing upgrade. <laughs> first of all, in the Amen. quality of my friendships, because my, my friendships were not based upon my, you know, my political beliefs at all. Like mm -hmm. that friends I didn't have friends that were going to not be friends with me anymore because we didn't see eye to eye on every single issue. But it's it's just amazing. It's the difference between being a moth and a flame in your wow. life. Wow. Do you want to be the moth or the flame? I That's have beautiful. decided <laughs> I want to be the flame, right? And I just, if you really want to, if, if that is a desire of your heart, first and not everybody maybe wants to speak out and be an activist, here would be my thing that I would just pass along to people. Don't be afraid. If they call you names, yeah, I mean, I, it, it hurts. I remember being called names and it feels like a body blow mm -hmm. at first, but then you go, well, huh, that didn't kill me going to be okay and it really just makes you stronger so 
I would just say, wherever you are in that stage, if there's something that is in your heart and on your mind and you have been quiet about it and you want to speak out, I would just encourage you to take that first step. You're going to be okay. In fact, you're going to be better than okay. And if you're a parent, it's a great thing to model to your kids and to future generations. I love that. I love that. I I am... I was recommended a book over the last uh, few weeks by my brother-in-law. It's called The Coddling of the American Mind. And I can't help but think this is also a part of the agenda, right? Because what it essentially says is that there's three untruths that have basically flooded uh, uh, parenting and it has flooded universities, and what they're trying to do essentially is is reprogram our children's minds into thinking uh, three things. Number one, the untruth of fragility. What and the untruth is what doesn't kill you makes you weaker. Mm-hmm. And so, if, so people are afraid of these tough conversations. They're afraid of this con- controversy, and they're afraid because they think they're actually going to die, or think they're going to they're going to get weaker. Or they think that it's going to traumatize them forever. When in reality, you are you're one of the blueprints that is showing us that you can upgrade your life. You can upgrade who you are. You can upgrade how you actually feel internally about yourself, and that's a beautiful thing. The second untruth is the untruth of emotional reasoning, which is always trust your feelings. And these mm-hmm. people are stuck on feeling good and only feeling the rainbows and puppy, puppy dogs every single day. And if it doesn't feel good, then you, you you cancel people and things like that, right? And the last one is the untruth of us versus them. And it's like this polarization, right? It says life is a battle be- between good people and evil people. And what these people do, these Marxists, these, these, these communist perspectives essentially do is they install the polarization, the divisiveness at our level. And we think we are the enemy amongst each other when in reality, the people pulling the puppet strings are the greatest evil that we can ever really, never really fathom about. And in the end, uh, Amy, you are, you are, you are, you are a blueprint and you're an inspiration. You're somebody that I I feel very, very blessed uh, to have watched just, just come into I think you you said it. It's 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 recognizing that life of quiet desperation when you can't when you when you are self censoring more than anyone else can censor you from the outside. You have this quiet desperation inside your heart and your soul, and you have been one of my models that just inspires that out every single day. And it's a beautiful thing because it isn't as hard and it isn't as dangerous as people like you to believe. And when you do it, on the other side of it is maybe more beauty and more inspiration, more purpose and more passion that you could ever imagine. Thank you for modeling that for us and thank you for sharing it with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. As you probably know, I'm the clinic director of the Future Generations Clinic of Chiropractic. I wanted to invite those of you in the greater San Diego area to come check us out. We expect and experience miracles in our office every day and would love for you to experience the same as well as your family, especially your kids. This month, we're offering our new patient package for just $67 for podcast listeners. The offer retails at $349 and includes an in-depth consultation where our patients literally tell us we know more about their family's health in the first 15 minutes than virtually every doctor on their healthcare team combined. Our state-of-the-art clinical workup, including insight nervous system scans, full spine digital x-rays, and a functional exam. We also include a full report of your results a customized plan to realize your greatest health potential as well as your first adjustment in our office. Check out the link in the show notes for all the details and claim the offer. Love and appreciate you all. What's up, FG fam? One of the single best companies whose products have supported the optimal wellness of our family for years is Earthly Wellness. Kate TG and her team have stood for truth, health, and freedom in ways that paved the way for so many of us. They experienced heavy levels of censorship long before it was popularized and they stood strong and persevered. Their products are clean, 
cost effective and honestly they work for all ages. From supporting my wife, our oldest, and our little guy, Earthly Wellness provides products that have been foundational for our family for years. We especially use their products right before bedtime, their feel better fast, and other herbal tinctures are some of the best in the world, as well as their amazing good night lotion, the magnesium oil, our mainstays. I am so excited to be partnering with Earthly to offer Future Generations podcast listeners 10% off your first purchase. You can find the code link in the show notes. Enjoy the rest of the show. Love and appreciate you all.